Now in my last or the previous video, uh, two classic deer rifle cartridge combos. Uh, I did a little bit of shooting with the uh, this Savage 99 that, that I've never had for 10 years and never shot. Well, when I, I fired a few rounds to it, and that was with a, let's call it a generic load, a load to, for Savage 99s that, that I've used for, in many, 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 during all the years that I worked on Savage 99s, and uh, I had a, a load that I worked up that worked good in virtually all of them. But in this particular rifle, that, that load's a little warm. That load's a little warm. So, what I've got today, and all I'm going to do, I'm, <laughs> I haven't got the time today to, to really uh, give the, the, that 94 and this 99 a good workout, but my curiosity is just getting the better of me. <laughs> I've got to shoot a little bit, a couple of rounds, to see if I've got a load here that might not be so uh, sticky. Let's just see here. Well, that one certainly didn't. That one didn't even offer to stick. <laughs> Yeah, that one was almost perfect. About a, just a touch, inch and a half or so high at about 50 yards. So it's, it's, <laughs> that one shot is real close to being perfect. Let's yeah, see where this one goes. And it ejects very easy. <laughs> Those two are real close together. Third and final shot for the day. The windage is absolutely perfect, but I got them stacked vertically. Boom, boom, boom. Probably not the load, probably just the way I'm seeing things. But anyway, <laughs> today's little session at the bench was great. They don't stick. <laughs> well, as is often the case with me, I changed my mind. <laughs> I was only going to fire those three shots today because I don't have a lot of time to devote to shooting or making a video today. But I was just going to shoot those three shots, but uh, they satisfied my curiosity. The fact that the, the load that I picked, the, the the load that, this load that I just picked, it's, it's not hot at all. It ejects extremely easy. It's very, very good there. But, I don't know if it's just me or the load, but anyway, I decided to change that load just a tiny little bit. And I'm going to check here and see. Fire it again. Fire a few more rounds. And see what it'll do. Did 
still. I went up in the load, a little tiny, but three tenths of a grain. Still good windage wise, but vertically, that load went. <laughs> that well, it went a little bit higher than all of them, so they're, they're strung out straight up and down. Accuracy is great. It's a little bit higher than I want and a little bit to the right. So that's, I just have to adjust the sights to get that. But that, the load is good. I mean, I can no doubt find a more accurate load, but this is a quite an accurate load. But by doing a lot of shooting, looking around, I can find no doubt a more accurate load, but this load is plenty. My goodness, no better than I can see iron sights at 60 yards, it's less than an inch. So that's plenty good enough for wood shooting, which is the only thing that I'm going to use this gun for, be wood shooting, uh, walk around through the wood. Or I might even set it into quickly, and if a deer gives me a really close shot, I might use it. But anyway, I'm going to wrap that up probably for today. Probably, <laughs> probably for today, but that looked good. That looked real good, and uh, I might load up another one. Too. You never know. I'm gonna leave the gun here for a little while. We'll see. <laughs> I might even shoot some more today. Well, to <laughs> not being able going, not being able not going to shoot any more today than three rounds. That's all I've I wasn't planning on shooting <laughs> Ah they had to shoot those first three then that I'm back again <laughs> with another load. I've gone up three more tents and I'm gonna try these and see what they do. And right now uh I'd be satisfied with the accuracy of that, those last three. I have no, no two ways about that. Two's touching, one's just barely out. Good grief. That's great. All I have to do is adjust the sights, but i got to try going up just a little more. Simple fact of the matter is, I just like to shoot this thing. <laughs> so I'm going to shoot. be amazing what three tenths of a grain will do sometime. Amazing, three tenths of a grain from the, from the first shot group to the second shot group. I went up three tenths of a grain. That group tightened way down, got rid of the vertical string. I went up three more tenths of a grain. <laughs> it's back to it's spread out considerably. So going on up is not the way to go. Well, <laughs> I'm back again, and this is most definitely going to be my last three that I shoot today. <laughs> well, I picked a, a load 
of 3031 powder. It shot okay, but then I went up three tenths and it shot beautifully. Went up three more tenths and it opened up again. So now I went back to my original and went down three tenths. And whatever results I get today, that's, that's it for today. More experiment will have to come at a little bit later date. I have not worked on the trigger on this gun at all. It's a little bit stiff. One of them shoots really good, so I've, I have found really close to the accuracy, accuracy potential of this powder uh, bullet combination. Uh, so I'm going let, to let that rest. We'll get back to doing a little bit more experimenting with maybe, the, I mean this load, <laughs> one of these loads is, well all of them actually are, are good enough for what I'm going to use it for, wood's gun for heaven's sake. Plenty good enough, and one is is great looking. The the first three anyway look really good, but Lord knows how much experimenting I'll do before it's over. But that's it for today. In grief, I have simply got to stop shooting today. <laughs> I was only going to shoot three rounds all day, but we got company coming. And I've got to quit this shoot. Get ready for company. But curiosity can be rough. <laughs> oh, here it goes. I promise you this is going to be the final three for today. that load <laughs> with 180 grainers, 180 grain hornady interlocks is just about perfect. <laughs> I could settle with that one and or that one that one that 165 but I'm gonna try these again another day. <laughs> I think I'm I think I've found me a, a load for this year. Well, it, <clears throat> it's the next day, and I'm going to do a, a bit more shooting, but this is the target from yesterday, and this is all the various uh, loads that I shot, that 300 Savage 99 EG, and I got two. Two good, two pretty good groups. This group right here, this circle group, is one, two, and three. These three shots right here. That's with 165 grain Hornady bullet and 30-31 powder. And it shot good. It shot, shot real good. So I could be satisfied with that. 
Then I decided I'd try the 180 grain horned bull. And there's two shots right here. These two. They're virtually in the same hole. One right here, one right here. Two. And the third one is right there. There's two here, one here. And they're an inch and a half high, which would be perfect at about 60, 65 yards. I gotta get my rest all set up here. And a 99 300 Savage, 99 EG 300 Savage. Well, we can get ready to shoot this thing. Like I said, it was shooting great yesterday. But because it shot a fine shot group yesterday doesn't necessarily mean it's going to do the same thing today but and another thing i'm out here in the in a bit of a sun and any time that you're shooting a iron sighted gun in the sun especially if you got on on the bead you got i got a brass bead here and when that sun sunlight hits on that bead it causes a lot of flare and it will often cause you to shoot a bit low a bit lower than what you normally would and to one side depend upon which way the sun's coming from so generally speaking that's why most iron sighted target guns and everything have got a hood on it to uh, shield that that little gold bead from all that flare Pretty doggone close. Pretty doggone close. I can live with that. <laughs> well, that flare, <laughs> you can already tell it. And I said that sun. is really making a, a precise aim very difficult for accuracy i mean really accuracy i might have to go back inside the barn shoot for where that front bead won't be in the sun but i'm gonna try try it there and we'll, we'll see what it does and it may be supposed to be cooler today but it's still getting hot so Let's just see right here. That was a, about the, roughly the right height, but. off to the side, which don't surprise me a bit with that glare on that, that front bead. Height rise look, looking pretty good, but it's, <laughs> it's spread them sideways. Simply because you <laughs> so uh I had to move back inside the barn here uh, because of the flare the sun flaring on that front bead flaring on this front bead you <laughs> classic you you can't exactly see where you're where you aiming because of the flare and that will generally cause you to shoot both your windage and your elevation off now that's just three shots but the first three shots yesterday with this load were super super tight 
And today they're spread out because I think because of the flare. Well, I know the flare had a whole lot to it, but I'm going. To, I'm back here in the shade. I'm going to shoot a few more, and let's see what happens here. That is definitely a better aim. Wow. Better aiming situation. But it's a human. <laughs> but these glasses are fogging up. really know where that shot went. It must have went one of the existing holes there. <laughs> and notice another thing about the 99. How easy the, the lever works and how easy and smoothly you can eject the shells. It's, the lever works so much smoother than something like a um, a 94 does it's very very smooth and positive okay one actually I actually need to raise this pin just a hair Just a hair. See what that does now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Alright. Here we go. Now watch out smoothly and easily this thing ejects <laughs> most lever actions you need to, to work that lever you, ne you need to in most lever actions 94 is not you hard shut that hard but this one you can work it a little bit easier but and a 94 in most Winchesters and and most lever actions actually cock on the forward throw. All right, what that does, and the savage cocks on closing, on closing. Well, if it if it cocks on the open, then you're pushing the gun away from your shoulder, and then you have to pull it back. But the Savage, it just effortless forward to eject it, and then when the, you're pulling it back into your shoulder as you cock it, which is a definite advantage. Well, I went up to check out the target. I mean, <laughs> I, I lost a bullet, I, I, I can't find it. But uh, yesterday, 
the, the group that I shot last, the first group that I shot this 180 grain load yesterday, put two virtually in the same hole. You could tell there. I mean, they're you had to look, but they were virtually in the same hole. And the other one, the third one, slightly off to the left. Well, I think today what I'm, I think they put them in exactly the same hole. The first two in exactly the same hole. Well, I, I can't. It just looks like one perfect hole. Whereas yesterday, it looked um, kind of an egg-shaped looking hole, you know. I mean, today, they're perfectly round, so. <laughs> and so I, I, that's good. And especially since I can't see those front sights good at all. Without these blooming glasses here, I just can't hardly see that front sight. I mean, it is an absolute blur. With them, it's still blurred. It's still blurred. But I can see it, and so if if I could see those signs clearly, I don't know what this thing be capable of shooting up, but it it's plenty good at this. What I've got it set out there right now, it's about 65 yards, which is about the maximum range you're going to shoot a deer at, or be able to shoot a deer at in our woods around here. But so I'm going to. Make it, a, but it's shooting a little bit left, I mean a little bit right, so I've made an adjustment and I'm going to load a few more rounds and I'm going to get it right, windage wise. It looks pretty good, it looks real good elevation wise, it's just, oh, yay high, you know, which is good. And then once I get that done, then I may move these targets on out to longer range, but my God, it, the temperature may be a little cooler today. Let me tell you, the humidity is up there. It is miserable hot. I am soaking wet with sweat. So I went back in the house, loaded up three more. That's all I'm doing. I'm loading up three at a time. And that gives the rifle a little bit of a chance to cool down between shots, too. But I made a adjustment to the sights. It was shooting a little bit right. Well... <laughs> Well, making that adjustment, I let my finger slip. <laughs> I don't know really how far I turned it. <laughs> I meant to turn it two clicks, and Lord, I don't know how I turned it. But anyway, I'm going to shoot this thing here see, and see what kind of adjustment, if I made anywhere near the right adjustment. I don't know. We're going to find out. Let me look at those target one more time. Well, we mm. that last shot went close to where I wanted it, but one shot don't tell you much. So do a couple more here. two shots. Well, it looks like I've got myself almost a perfect zero. Let's see. Put another one up. Put another one down range. See what she does. Well, I've set me a target up out there at 100 yards. And with this rifle, it's Savage 99 with peep sight on it, 180 grain bullet. It's, it's set up for wood shooting. And 60 yards, about the maximum distance you can be able to see a deer, you get a shot off in where I'll be hunting with it. And it's shooting less than one inch. Well, less than one inch. No better than I can see the sights. <laughs> oh, goodness. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. But now I've moved it on out to 100 yards. 
and that's beyond the limits that I will probably be shooting this gun. But anyway, I'm going to just see where it's hitting at. Gosh, it's hot and humid. Holy moly. Miserable. Hot. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to raise this from my rest. <laughs> a guy one time read a comment and he said, asked me to explain to him why in my videos it, it looked like I was shooting at birds, you know, shooting uphill all the time. And I said, it's cause I am. <laughs> I live in the mountains, honey, and it's, it's this hilly country. We don't have flat land here. So I am always shooting slightly up or slightly downhill, but never at a steep enough angle to make any difference, any practical difference anyway. All right. Let's give it a whirl at a hundred. Let's see where Amazon driver just come up. I guess I better not be shooting scared snot one now then. Well, he, he's on his way out here. <laughs> I'd fire this gun, him over at the front door trying to deliver a package. <laughs> he might come unglued. All right, let's see where this one goes. Couldn't get a real good sight picture that time. Man, I, <laughs> ah, I just cannot see real good. No matter what I do, I don't see real good. That needs to raise up just a hair more. Amazing what a little bit of difference in the height of the front rest makes. Oh yeah. What's going on here with my red? I think my sandbag might be getting about wore out and I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why that would be. Okay.
that load is pretty much dead on at 100 yards. It's still a little bit to the right. So, I'm going to take it a click left. I am. Two clicks left. Then I'm going to No, I'm not <laughs> I'm tempted to raise it up a little bit. No, I'm not gonna do that. I could pretty much say I'm dead on 100 yards with that load. Uh, I, think I, I think I'll leave it there. <laughs> I think I'll take my own advice and leave it there. Shooting very good, very accurate. But I will go and load up three more and check mine. Since I made this sight adjustment, I'll I'll load up a few more and check them and we'll see. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm always done something I say I'm not going to. I said I'm not going to sh shoot any further than 100 yards. And went in loading up three more. Try here move <laughs> move the target back to 150 yards. And I'd made a couple of sight adjustments, but I want to see. I just, I just want to see if uh, I usually have uh, these iron sided things adjusted where I'll have a 150 yard point blank range, but they're, uh, they're, I'll have them a little bit higher at 60 yards than what they are and a little bit high, higher at 100. Right now it's pretty much dead on to 100. But I'm going to leave it there. At least I say I am. I think I'm going to leave it there. But I want to shoot at 150 just to see where it's at. I think the bullet will be too low. I don't think I'll have quite a 150 yard point blank range with this sight setting. But I'll probably have maybe 125, 130. We'll see. But whatever it is, it's further than I'll be shooting at anything with this rifle. This is a woods rifle. Anything beyond 60 yards where I'll be hunting with this gun would be a miracle. That was a fluke. I almost, <laughs> almost a bullseye. <laughs> and I can't even see the cotton picking sights, and I can't always really see the target. I mean, if you've got young eyes that you can see all this with iron sights and stuff, for heaven's sake, enjoy iron sights while you can. I had perfect vision for years, took it for granted. Tried to put a scope on during their everything. <laughs> <laughs> and never realized just how much fun iron sights are. And then when your vision started getting less than normal, you, uh, less than perfect, you begin to appreciate and you really want to sh shoot these things. But I guess I'm doing, that gonna be, I guess I'm doing remarkably well shooting to not be able to see sights or target or anything else clear. So. The gun is definitely a shooter. I mean, the gun has 
tremendous accuracy potential. And this load is one, I just picked this load. I haven't tweaked it, I haven't done anything. This is just a load I picked it out of the book, loaded up, and said, well, surely it'd be good enough to hunt a deer in the woods with. Well, actually, the load's fairly good, but could I get a load that was better? Of course I could. But am I going to work to try to do that? No, for a couple of reasons. First, you can't find components, and if you do, you can't afford them. So I'm going to make myself <laughs> adhere to, if it's good enough, it's good enough. And this load, this load is plenty good enough for what I'm going to be doing. It's more than adequate. Now let's try shot number two at that 150 yard target. My goodness. <laughs> oh boy. Those two are ridiculously. Oh. Felt like that one off just a little bit. Let's see. <laughs> it's a little bit left. <laughs> a little bit left. Uh, just a hair left. Do you think I'm going to try to pull it back? I say I'm not. I'm not. I mean, I'm going to leave that cotton picking thing there. At 150 yards, that shot group is dead on elevation wise. And maybe it's less than an inch, less than an inch left at 150 yards. <laughs> so at the, the distance that I expect to shoot a deer, it's going to be. 60 yards, something like that. It's going to be a quarter, three-eighths inch maybe left. I don't know, something like that maybe. And at 40 yards, it's going to be, you're not going to know. It's, 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 it's a good zero, confounded, I'm going to leave it there. This rifle is a shooter. Now I mean it's a shooter. When I say that the Savage 99 is a rifle that balances like a fine over and under or side by side shotgun shoots with the accuracy of a bolt action yet it has the speed of a lever action and a smooth incredibly smooth lever action it 99 is a cotton picking awesome rifle if you don't own one you've never shot one you owe it yourself to, to give it a try. It, it, it's a fabulous rifle. I can't sing its praises enough. Just a wonderful rifle. <laughs> yeah, boy. My goodness. With, with the scarcity of ammo and everything that I've got right now, I'm going to leave that thing alone. I think. <laughs> Oh, uh, should I tweak it back one click right? Should I? Can I get that thing one click right? That should be perfect. <laughs> I'm going to leave it there, though. Savage 99. <laughs> it's a shame they can't afford to make this thing today. 
And it's a shame that that hunters are flocking to the plastic and the blacks and quite frankly cheaper made guns. They may be accurate and they may do all this stuff, but most guns made today are uglier than a mud fence. Blue steel and walnut, beautiful graceful lines like on this. It shoots with incredible accuracy. The young hunter growing up today has no idea what they're missing by carrying these weird old contraptions around and these tactical things with the monsters, bulky scopes and all the paraphernalia on it. Get you a, at least one, get you a good, well-balanced, beautiful, beautiful, well-balanced, great handling rifle. Take it to the woods. Don't get up your tree stand with all that stuff. Steel hunt. Steel hunt. Move around through the woods. Get in the cover with him. Slowly slip around. Develop your uh, skill, your steel hunting skills. Get right in there with him. That's enjoyable. And while you're doing it, you're carrying a beautiful rifle that you will thoroughly enjoy carrying. <laughs> Savage Nine now. I gotta thank my brother Doug for turning me on to these things. And I sure am glad I kept this one and didn't sell it. <laughs> it too is a shooter. Great rifle. And now I'm gonna fire a few rounds through the old 3030 Winchester 94 there again I'm going back to 60 yards to approximately 60 yards and I'm going to shoot the, the hand loads first which are same same loads uh, that Diane used to take her elk with. It's 170 grain Hornady flat point. That would be about right. I'm going to be shooting the Hornady 170 grain flat point hand loads. And I'm going to fire a three shot group. See what it does. Like I said, this was my dream rifle when I was a kid growing up now. When I was talking about the way uh, uh, to operate a lever action. The 94 when you operate, it drops down. The whole mechanism here, this drops down. And then your pivoting begins. So it's kind of a, a two-stage deal. And it's never as smooth as the 99. It can't be by its design. But you also, it, just, it doesn't feed as smoothly or eject as smoothly as the 99. But any lever action, including the 99, the biggest mistake that most people make is they don't operate it fast enough. If you want to throw that thing hard forward, hard back, it will feed and eject. But if you lollygag around, you drag it forward and drag it back, 
you're going to experience feeding problems. So operate that lever with some authority. And in any lever action, don't, let me put that thing down here on safe a minute. Don't grip it, don't take a death grip like that. Put your thumb over the top. Don't take it like you shoot shaking hands or something. You want to, and most people take a hard grip sideways here and a hard grip here. But when you pull it up, there's all kinds of strain. Don't do that with any rifle, but particularly if you're going to shoot these lever actions, take this forward hand and turn it forward. Turn your hand, point your hand, particularly your index finger, which is right under the rifle, right at your target. Take this hand, pull you end up put two fingers in the lever. Two fingers. Third little little finger out. Two fingers in. And then lay your thumb along the side. Along the side. I'll show you in a second how that uh, it, uh, allows you to operate that lever very quickly and very smoothly. Right now we're going to just... See where it's hitting with these hand loads. So, let me take a look. That's just about dead on at 60, 65 yards, which is exactly where I had it. For Diane to take that elk, I knew we weren't going to be shooting over that distance because she's going to be walking around shooting offhand. So it's at 60 yards, and that's perfect. Now, operate that lever. See how, <laughs> even though I'm going to operate it quickly, see how it's stuck. But Savage 99 don't do that. I mean, it's just so smooth, but these, not only do you push them forward, you actually need to pull down and forward. Then quickly. Operate it with some authority. But the 99s, I mean, the 94 is much I love. It. it is not as smooth as the 99, not by a long shot. But does it carry beautifully? Is it beautiful, right? Yes, sir, I love it. But... Apples are apples and oranges are oranges. I love this little Ralph. I love this little 99 or 94. Even though it is not as smooth as the 99. It is a still a fabulous deer rifle. The way you do it and those two are almost touching well that action drops down and pivots it's just, it's just not first down, then pivot for it. The whole action, if you operate it slow, it's, anything, it's not smooth at all. It's a bit jerky compared to the 99. Beautiful. Let me see where that third one went. A nice little clover leaf. For a fact. There it went. That was my hand load. Now I'm going to shoot 
three. Remington core lock. We'll shoot the Remington core lock round nose instead of the Hornady. These are uh, 170 grain round nose. See where they go. Point of impact certainly changed. Let's see what about the accuracy. Well, it's amazing. <laughs> both, both of these are 170 grain loads. This is 170 grain Remington Core Lock, round nose, 170 grain Hornady, flat point. The shot group with the Remington factory load is way over twice as large as shot group with the, with the hand load. Probably closer to three times as big and shooting several inches low, which is amazing. Two identical bullet weights shooting Accuracy is entirely different and the point of impact is dramatically different. So, so I've got several of these core locks. And I will just probably just practice with those things over the, over time. Because I will continue to hunt or will we'll, we'll continue to use primarily for anything I'd even think about hunting is going to be the Hornady flat point with this load. It's a great load. And it utilizes, of all things, Varget powder. So this is the only... <laughs> Varget's a very popular powder, but this 3030 is the only thing I ever found that Varget shoots good in my gun. Everybody else rants and raves about it. But I've never had good performance out of anything except for this 3030. And it does do that. But when you let's 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 compare one more time, one more time here. Let's just look at the difference in the actions of these these two rifles. The ninety-four, the ninety-four. When you start, yet if you all right, if you shot it and you've got a. Uh, empty in here that's not, you know brass in here it's just stuck a little bit if you start to push forward on that lever it it, it it's sticky that's the best way to explain it but if if when you if you learn to pull down and forward it works a whole lot better and of course you want to work it fast now if you're shooting like most people 
you got your hands in, you got a grip on there, and you're putting all the fingers in the lever. You come out, and then you take that finger and thumb over the top, and you've got a grip on that gun. You've got all this strain in here. It strains you. But if you'll straighten that hand out and lay your gun in, you, you take a just just a light enough, it more or less the weight of the rifle laying in your hand. You got just enough grit to push it back against your shoulder. But particularly with the 94, you've got to keep it back against your shoulder because the cocking motion is when you're pushing the lever away from you, which tends to pull the the gun away from your shoulder, so you got to keep it snug back against your shoulder. And then on the close, there's, 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 you're just chambering. But the cocking motion is here and pushes the gun away from your shoulder. So you have to have enough of a grip to push it back. Again, it pushes the buttstock back against your shoulder. And by having just two fingers in the lever, one finger out, and your thumb along the side, Instead of having all the hands in like this, and you got to get your thumb off first, then work your lever, come back, and then get your thumb over it. Look at my wrist. Look, look how awkward that is. But if you'll pull that out, pull that little finger out, put two fingers in, keep your thumb alongside, not over here. Relax then along, just alongside, and point out that when you come down, it's just here. You're not doing this. You know, come off, work your lever, come back over. You're not doing that. Just that's all there is to it. Takes a little practice, but lever actions are very quick. But they take a little bit of practice, and for heaven's sake. Throw it with some authority. Most people, half the people, done it this way. How awkward! Two fingers in the lever. This hand, the forehand hand, you pointing forward with it just laying in there, and your index finger pretty much pointing towards your target. Have your thumb and your index finger on the shooting hand, everything's pointing toward your target relaxed. You've got a relaxed grip on your gun. And your thumb outside here, just laying alongside to where when you pull down you come back, you can pull the trigger. You don't have to go this extra step here. That's it. That's it. That's it. Works real good. Just a little tip there. But that, like I said, as you know, when you break the lever down, all this, the whole bottom section drops down. And then the pivoting action starts. See this? Then it starts to pivot and work your bolt. It's, it's got a little bit of an awkward movement. Now, whereas the 99, it, all the pivoting motion is right here. Right here. It's just a smooth, the lever is just smooth. It's just it's a smooth throw. A smooth, smooth throw. And when you shot, and you're going to cut this, instead of the Winchester being hard to move, this thing pretty much just moves on its own. It's so easy. That part is easy. It don't tend to pull the gun away from your shoulder. The cocking motion, when you're cocking the hammer and everything, it's when you're pulling back. So you're pulling the gun back into your shoulder. You're not pushing it away like you're doing with the Winchester. You're pulling it back. So it's a 
same quick hard motion oh talking about this thing being ahead of its time the 99 has the the rotary magazine rather than the under the barrel tube magazine like the Winchester has which necessitates round nose or flat point bullets but this having a, a magazine you can use these sharper spitzer type bullets in here which is a real advantage as far as getting more aerodynamic bullets all right the lockup mechanism is extremely strong got good triggers and it also had a cocking indicator if you don't have a hammer that you can look at to see what it got a cocking indicator right here you see this little gentleman stuck up right there a lot of people call it a loaded chamber indicator but actually it's a cocking indicator see it right here But irregardless, whether, either, either, whichever one you're using, use that lever with authority. And don't take this over the wrist grip here. Lay that thumb along the side where it stays out of the way. Boom. Yeah. Whatever. If you don't have a Winchester 94 33, and you don't have a Savage 99, 300 Savage. <laughs> That's a shame. <laughs> That's all I can say. It's a shame. They're awesome rifles. Absolutely awesome rifles. And I've enjoyed shooting them. Getting out here, even though it's hot as a firecracker. I've got good results with both of them. <laughs> yeah, especially this 99 goodness gracious I mean I'll I'll recover the targets and I'll show you the targets but it it's amazing it's absolutely amazing so I'll go out there and get the targets come back in and we'll talk about that in a minute let me just state again the fact that I cannot see iron sights clearly I can't do it uh, when I was younger, I had perfect vision. I could see the rear sight, front sight, and the target plane. Uh, I can't do that anymore. And it would be nice if I could see those sights. I mean, the, I can see it, but it's blurred. It's extremely blurred. But when you're shooting peep sights like I was doing on both these rifles, I'm shooting peep sights on both of them. Uh, Your eye will naturally find the center of a circle. So when you've got that peep sight in rear, don't even think about it. Your eye will find the center. And you're using a round bead, a round gold bead, and your eye knows where the center of that is. So you put that round bead in the center of that fuzzy rear circle. Then you put the center of that bead on what you want to hit. So in this case, I'm using round targets. So I got a, a rear fuzzy sight. And under normal conditions, I would have a clear round front bead, but I don't. It's blurred. Sometimes you hardly see it at all. And then I've got a clear target out there. So the target out of the distance is perfectly clear, which, which is great. The rear sight as fuzzy as I'll get out and that don't matter your eyes just gonna find the center the problem is that fuzzy front sight if I could see that thing clearly it's hard to say how accurate this 99 would be because right now the only thing I've shot in it is a load that I just picked I have not worked a load up for it I just picked this book this load out of the book it's shooting great so the rifle has fantastic accuracy potential and I'm sure I could work up a much more accurate load, but this load is plenty accurate enough. I mean, plenty accurate enough. <laughs> I'm going to make myself 
stop right there because at it's, it's the, the availability of components and the price of it, I'm not just going to keep chasing and trying to cut down a tiny little bit, fraction of an inch. I'm not going to do it because this is plenty good enough. And for me, that's quite a change because good enough is not good enough. I always strive for perfection. I wanted to, I want as small a group as I can get and everything else, but in this case, I'm going to make myself settle for something less than maybe perfect. But this, all these shots here represent several um, uh, uh, different site settings and what have you, and with and with different different loads. But the last three shots with that 180 grain Hornady that I fired, two of them here and one of them here. Two of them in the same hole, one of them here. I made a... <laughs> oh, that, that, that's good. And then, that's at 100 yards. Did I move? I mean, that's at 60 yards, all right? 60, 65 yards. Then I moved out to 100 yards. And I shot this. There's my cartridge. Shot that at 100 yards. Like I said, I cannot see the cotton picking sights. The first two was here. First two was here. And then I said that I could not, I was having a heck of a time with that one sight picture. And that was this one. We'll throw it out. Anyway, that's at 100 yards. You see, that's a nice, nice small little group. And then I moved out, I made a side adjustment and moved out to 150 yards. This is 150 yards. Look at that. That's at 150 yards. Iron sights that I can't even see. <laughs> uh, and that's plenty good enough accurate. If you can see the sights, this thing is plenty accurate enough. So if this is at 150 yards, and we're going to take the extreme spread on it. 150 yards is one and seven eighths inches. It's one and seven eighths inches. So say one and three quarter. That's right at one and three quarter. At 60 yards, it's going to be half of that. One and three quarter. At half, it, it's going to be half that. It's going to be about a seven eighths of an inch group at the normal distance that I'll be shooting a deer with. I'm going to leave it there. It's pretty much dead on at a hundred yards. And I made it. Uh, by the way, I did make another sight jump. I moved it one click right, so I don't know if it will be this one. I moved from here. Moved two clicks, two clicks, and it went to here. That went to here, so I move one click back. So it should be pretty much, pretty much in the center. I'll try that before for the season. I'll fire it again, but for right now I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit at that. That is plenty good enough. Then with 30 30 again at that 60 yard. Aim it here. Nice tight little group. This is with the hand loads, and this is the core lock. I will stay with the hand loads. And that's pretty much just exactly like I had it zeroed 12 years ago when Diane got her elk with it. It's the same, shooting the same, same bullet, same load, same everything. Same everything. 60 yards was going to be the maximum. So that's what it's zeroed for. <laughs> so it's shooting very, very good. So these, these two, two uh, iconic, these two classic rifles, Winchester 94 30, 30 and the Savage 99 300 Savage are absolutely awesome rifles. They were in the, their, their, their heyday, they still are today, and they still will be many years from now. They're awesome guns. You, you can be hard pressed to find better guns to use for as deer, woods deer rifles. I mean, the 94, it's not as smooth and everything as the 99. It doesn't have the power that the 99 and the 300 Savage has got, but 
It's short, it's handy, it balances, it's beautiful, it carries like a dream. It operates slick and fast and has plenty of accuracy and plenty of power for hunting any deer or black bear in under woods conditions. They're just great, hard to beat guns. Then the 99, with that slick, strong action, and its ability to shoot aerodynamic bolts. <sighs> the great balance, the great bolt action accuracy, the speed of a lever action is just an awesome gun. So, <laughs> <sighs> it'll be around for a long time. It's a great, great, great gun. So if you have the opportunity to shoot one or buy one, for heaven's sake, get it. They're just simply great. They're fabulous, iconic, American deer woods, deer cartridges, rifle combos. They're absolutely great. So do yourself a favor and check into them. And we will talk soon about that.